Uh, yes, I am out of the running, yeah. You, you don't see yourself doing that role. I mean, it would be perhaps ideal for you to t carry on this. They're looking for a, a former leader uh, of a country as well. I'm, but, but I'm not a former leader. But you will, leader be by, you will be by then, though, sir. Well, all politicians one day are a former leader, but at the <laughs> moment, I'm in charge. Mark, what's going on in terms of European defence spending as well? Are, are we talking the talk but actually doing the deed as well? A lot of people are raising questions about getting over that 2% limit and going a little bit further. I think we are, we are doing what is necessary in terms of all the countries now are moving north in terms of their defence spending and the Netherlands for the first time in many many years will in 2024 cross the 2% hurdle and that means in real terms that we will spend 20 billion euros on defence which is a huge amount. We are doing even more than Spain which has a bigger economy so the Netherlands is really up there with the big guys uh, almost close to Canada uh, and I think that's, that's, that's great news. I'm very proud of that. So it took me 10 years and, and all the governments and ministers of defence and foreign affairs to do that sometimes working against the finance ministers but now we are there and I'm very happy for that and very proud um, obviously we need to do more even after that but that will I think in my country be part of the elections. Karen Studio made a very good point actually that um, can Europe afford this? I mean at the time when we're trying to reinvigorate our infrastructure, invigorate our green program as well, can we afford to spend this kind of money and keep fiscal discipline? You talked about the battles with finance ministers. Yes, we can and we have to because this is about our values and about our safety. So it's great that you have your car on the road. It is great to have your uh, health systems and social security systems. But if you have not protected your country against aggression, and we have now seen that Russia is willing to invade another sovereign country, Ukraine, where can this end if they will be successful in Ukraine? Uh, who is next? So we have to make sure that Russia will never take that chance by knowing that we are willing to do what it takes. Um, final question for me. Do you see any route to peace at the moment? This has now been an over 500-day conflict. The counteroffensive is moving forward, but perhaps not at the pace that many people had hoped as well. The Russian defences are very strong. The Russians are learning how to fight a 21st century war as well in Europe as well. Can you see any resolution to this conflict any time? Let me make a couple of quick points. First, the counteroffensive, we do not know exactly, none of us, where this exactly stands. And give the Ukrainians some time. They are extremely smart. And they will not let themselves be dictated by the news cycle. So they will do step by step what is necessary, and they still might surprise us. Secondly, yes, in the future, Ukraine might also face setbacks at the battlefield. And particularly then, do we have to stand with Ukraine? It's easy when they are successful, like at the moment, uh, but if in the future there will be problems, then we all have to stick with them, uh, because then it is even more, more important. And finally, on, on peace agreements, etc., it, it is up to President Zelensky and his team to decide when he wants to engage in those talks. And I can imagine if part of your country is occupied, you are not willing to do that. Prime Minister, just finally, what, why are you stepping away from politics? You are, dare I say, you've got the nickname Teflon Mark as well. You, you've lasted a long well, time. Oh, it's a positive <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. it seems positive oh, it, it, no, for no, us no, as well. So, why, 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 why are you going to step away, Mark? Because I have now been in this fantastic job for almost 13 years. And when the new government comes in, maybe over 13 years. Uh, it's an incredible honor. Uh, but I've been thinking about it since Friday, since the government collapsed and decided on Sunday morning it's time for change. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.